So why the marathon racer on my 360? Hi everyone, welcome back here with Freddy once again. I've been asked this in some of the comments or DMs, so I thought I'd do a video to share my thought process on this. Quite frankly, I feel this is a very difficult topic to address because there are so many subjectivities that are involved. I do not think there is one best buyer that is for everyone out there because this very much depends on one's definition and the many other factors that goes into defining what's best, such as the purpose of riding and the kind of terrain that the bike will be on most of the time. Also, the lack of comparative data across the different tyre brands also make this very difficult. Many tyres claim to be the fastest or the most durable, but who really measured them and based on what? I guess no one really knows. Qualities such as comfort or looks are also highly subjective because it really means different things to different people and there are more factors that goes into these qualities than just the tyres alone. So yeah, a really challenging topic to address but I'll try my best to be as objective and neutral as possible. Anyway, I have four tyres from Shrawby with me here today. They are the Marathon, the Marathon Racer, the Kojak and the One. I've owned three of them before except for the Shrawby one so I will be speaking basically on my user experience on them and perhaps do some estimation of how the one will be matching up against them. Anyway, special thanks to AM Cycle who lent these tires to me. Uh, I must be explicit that this is not a paid promotion or anything like that. Just a special shout out to someone who's kind enough to lend these tires to me for the purpose of today's video. Anyway, let's start rolling. Now let's go through some of the specifications and start off with the size. To do that, a basic introduction to the ETRTO, the European Tire and Rim Technical Organization size marking standards in MM will be useful. Basically, when you run along the side walls of the Kojak, you will see somewhere where it says that this is 32-349. What these numbers denote is actually the width and internal diameter of the tires in MM. 32-349 on the Kojak basically means that the Kojak will be 32 mm in width after installation and the internal diameter is 349 mm. The Koja is really the only outlier in this category with it being narrower as compared to the rest which stands at 35 mm. Now what does this mean in real terms and is there any advantages or disadvantages of a tyre being wider or narrower? There are many articles online which I will leave you to read, I'll leave some in my description box below but basically wider tyres can, not will, Provide better comfort because of the larger chamber of air between the road and yourself. You can also run lower pressure on wider tyres to reduce the risk of pinch flats. There can also be impact on rolling resistance as well. With all things being equal, tyre pressure, compound, road condition, etc. Narrower tyres can have slimmer but longer contact area on the ground, increasing rolling resistance. So there you have it, enough about the size. Let's move on to the weight, that will be more interesting. Now let's move on to the weight which is going to be an interesting one. The comparisons of weight is in the chart so do have a look. Let's talk about other things relating to tyre and rim weight. Our bikes usually go from rotational motion of the wheels to translational motion of the bike. I won't go too in depth here but the weight will have a direct impact on acceleration because it will impact rotational inertia. Now what this really means is that say we have a very heavy wheel here more force will be required for us to rotate this from rest. Whereas, if this is a lighter wheel, less force will be required for us to rotate this from rest. Following this train of thought, having a lighter tyre and rim combination will definitely improve acceleration. And because of this relationship between rotational motion of the wheels and translational motion of the bike, weight savings of the tyres and rims may actually have a multiplier effect as compared to weight savings that we do on non-rotating parts on our bike. So this is to say for example 100 grams of weight savings on the wheels and rims could translate to acceleration improvements equivalent to 2 or 3 times weight savings on non-rotating parts on our bikes. I can't do the calculation to find out the exact multiplier here, should have listened in class, but if some of you could, I would be interested to know. So please let me know. So it's no surprise that people come to me saying that the Koja or the Shelby one are really fast tyres. Notwithstanding the fact that they are leaning more towards the slick 
tyre side of things. These things weigh about 1.8 times to 2.4 times lighter than the Shrouby Marathon. So just put it in nominal terms, imagine just swapping out the tyres from, uh, from a standard Shrouby Marathon to a Shrouby 1, the weight savings on the bike is already close to 500 grams. That combined with the effect of the enhanced performance that come with shaving off rotational mass on the wheel and tyre combination is, in my opinion, really a bang for buck performance upgrade. Puncture resistance. Okay, this is also another tough one. All four tyres have different puncture protection systems which you can look up on Schwalbe's website. But I think it says very little about its effectiveness in real world terms against punctures. Fortunately, there has been puncture tests conducted on similar tyres. I'll share the link below in the description box for you to have a read on the tyres being tested as well as other tyres you may be interested in or even the puncture test methodology and it's interesting. So the data I've collated, I wouldn't say that they are conclusive because the exact tyres here were not tested. They came in different sizes, year and even models. So what I did here was to pick out tyres of the same model but different year or of similar construct and I think it would be a good proxy for us to draw some reference. So please use it as a reference rather than gospel truth. While this is non-conclusive, I think it tallies very much with my user experience for the three which I've owned. I had no puncture issues with the marathon or whatsoever, uh, riding across all sorts of terrain. However, I did have a puncture when I was traveling overseas on the marathon. Uh, it's not the tires for the whole thing, just slid open. It was very bad uh, road conditions. The issue I had with that was that it was very difficult to fix. Um, and I almost missed my train because of that. Uh, I'm not sure if I can show you or illustrate this uh, through the screen, but if you can see here, this is the standard marathon that I have. And what I'm trying to illustrate is that it is very hard. Um, you try to depress it, it is uh, very difficult to, it is slightly more difficult and hardy uh, as compared to the marathon racer. So, I would say the Marathon Racer would be an easier one among the two to fix if you have a puncture by the roadside. The Marathon for me personally was a nightmare and um, yeah, I'm, I'm so so bothered that it happened in such an untimely moment, right? Um, you know, uh, on the other hand, I've had quite frequent punctures on my Kojaks, perhaps about three times over a span of one year. I would expect the one, the Shelby one, to perform slightly better than the Koja, but not better than the Marathon Racers or Marathon. Um, but well, my user experience on punctures are also very subjective. It could all boil down to luck and maybe not even the tyre's fault. So yep, I'm leaving this to you for you to draw your own conclusions. Alright, next on is the grip. I think amongst the four tyres here, they can be broadly categorised into two main categories. One would be the slicks, next would be the threaded tyres. There are a lot of articles speaking about why slicks are being used in Formula 1 during dry weather. It's a little bit counterintuitive, but basically in well-paved roads, slicks should offer better grip as compared to threaded tyres because they offer maximum rubber contact with the ground. You'll notice some of these compounds are actually made softer so that you can really dig in into the slightly uneven surfaces of the pavements to get a good grip to move forward. So for example, if let's say we have a smooth road surface at the back of my calculator and a smooth tire surface like the one found on the Koja, they will be able to draw full rubber or road contact with each other because there are no gaps in between and can offer better grip. On the other hand, if let's say we have a threaded tires like the Marathon Racer where there are all these nooks and crannies in between, when they come into contact with the, a smooth road surface like that, there will be gaps in between and the contact is not maximized. Therefore, theoretically, it should offer a slightly inferior grip as compared to the slicks. Uh, in theory, this should work the same in the wet because aqua landing doesn't really happen when riding a bicycle. You can read about this uh, in my description box below as well. Um, on the other hand, on uneven surfaces, the threaded tires will have an advantage. So imagine this 
front part of the calculator to be the uneven surfaces all these buttons will be the gravels, stones or whatever the spaces in the track will be able to catch on to the edges of the buttons and move forward on the other hand if a slick tyre is being used on an uneven surface like that it is natural that there will be gaps in between and the grip is not maximised as well so my user experience on this is that in the dry, um, the Kojak indeed uh, work better as compared to the other two that I've had but it is not really different, like it's slightly better and I would expect the one uh, to do to perform just as well or even better than the Kojak in the dry uh, Theoretically the Kojak should do just as well uh, in the wet but personally, I find it to be slightly inferior as compared to the Marathons or the Marathon Racer because I've slipped a couple of times on the Kojaks and it didn't really give me that confidence in the web. So hopefully, the one will be able to change things, uh, but we'll see. So yeah, leaving these thoughts with you again for you to draw your own conclusions. Okay, so what kind of riding would I buy each of them for? So let's start off with the Marathon. I think I will buy this for daily commuting or even travelling if I require high level of puncture protection but as I shared with you earlier this is a little bit difficult for me to switch out uh, when a puncture happens so I really do not want to be stranded on the roadside when I'm travelling and I have tight timelines to meet so perhaps for the travelling part I will be thinking about the marathon racer uh, just carry spares along so that it's easier to switch out if anything happens uh, along the road uh, Next, let's talk about the Marathon Racer I think I will buy this if I'm looking for an all-rounder among the four uh, It offers some level of durability of the marathons without compromising too much on the weight or performance So I think this is a very good choice for being an all-rounder uh, and will definitely buy this in fact, I bought this. Alright, next is the uh, Koja. Uh, I would buy this if I am going to ride on dry pavements most of the time and I'm after speedy rides. So speedy rides on dry pavements only. Uh, of course, there will be different people saying that you know, this uh, works well in the wet as well. Uh, but that's just not for me, I totally have no confidence uh, in this tyre in the wet. Um, yeah, just personal opinion. Next is the hottest, Shelby 1. Well, I think uh, by looking at this, I think this has a potential to be an all-weather speedy tyre. Uh, it has higher volume than the Kojaks. So you know the wet, the wet grip problem that I have on the Kojak, I can probably try to lower the pressure on this to get a better grip in the wet while not compromising too much of performance in the dry so I think this definitely has the potential to become like an all-weather speedy ride kind of tyre so yeah, these are the various reasons why I would buy each of them for Alright, so in the last part maybe I should share some thoughts on why I went with the marathon races my emphasis would be to have an all-terrain, all-conditioned tyre without compromising too much on dry pavement performance. So if we look at this matrix here, I think the Marathon Racer will do really well in all-terrain riding. If I have to go through some mud piles of gravel on my bike, or if I occasionally get caught in the rain, I really wouldn't want to worry too much about the grip. Besides, it also offers good puncture resistance feature in relation to all four options here. In terms of weight, I think it's not too far off from the Kojaks. They are approximately about 36 grams apart, but definitely doesn't come near to the ones that weigh about 170 grams. But I think I can live with a slightly heavier weight for better all-terrain grip and puncture resistance. The last two are highly subjective. Acceleration and speed is based on feel and experience only. There's no measurements on this. I think. The Marathon Racers wouldn't come near the Kojak or the Ones for dry speedy rides. But I think I really couldn't care less on this bike because it's for leisure rides only. So I'm totally fine with this. Last but not least is the looks. I really think the wordings on the Kojak and the One really looks a lot cooler as compared to the Marathon Racer. 
especially the big fonts on the Kojak. But well, not really a deal breaker, but more of a nice plus. So there you have it, my reasons of why I chose the Marathon Racers among the four. Alright, this brings us to the end of today's video. As always, my opinions for your conclusion. Thank you again for watching. See you soon. Bye-bye.